I'll be quite frank with you. We changed what we were going to do on account that we thought that the house manager's presentation was well done. Watching the impeachment proceedings for Donald Trump, particularly whether or not the Senate will vote to convict him, it is a little bit bittersweet. And what I mean by that is it needs to happen. I think it's important because you can't just allow a president to get away with whatever he wants because he's a lame duck president and he'll be out of power. I mean, if you incite an insurrection, you should be held accountable. Otherwise, future presidents during their lame duck sessions will be tyrants. So, you know, there needs to be accountability. It's important. But at the same time, what are the odds that he actually gets convicted? I think very, very low. Now, I am pleasantly surprised that the Senate, uh, a majority of them, including some Republicans, voted that it is constitutionally permissible to impeach a president who is no longer in power. That's something that is good to see. However, I wish that they were actually less afraid of their base and would just vote based on whether or not they think he's guilty, objectively speaking. Because if you follow the facts, if you listen to the argument that the Democrats are making in favor of Trump's impeachment, I just, I don't think you can be against it. I think that Jamie Raskin is doing a phenomenal job here. Having said that, though, Trump's lawyers, on the other hand, are not doing so well, to say the least. I'll be quite frank with you. We changed what we were going to do on account that we thought that the House manager's presentation was well done. We are generally a social people. We enjoy being around one another. Senators of the United States, they're not ordinary people. And boy, this is a diverse group. We still know what records are, right? On the thing you put the needle down on and you play it. I worked in this building 40 years ago. I got lost then, and I still do. I represent the great state of fill in the blank. I saw a headline, Representative so-and-so seeks to walk back comments about, I forget what it was, something that bothered her. I don't want to steal the thunder from the other lawyers, but Nebraska, you're going to hear, is quite a judicial thinking place. If the individual state legislators, legislatures didn't adopt the Constitution, we would not have it. The floodgates will open. As I was going to say originally, it will release the whirlwind. But I subsequently learned since I got here that that particular phrase has already been taken, so I figured I'd better change it to floodgates. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen as bad a defense team uh, as the president sent up, but I have no idea what they thought they were doing. That was the worst opening statement I have ever heard yesterday. And I tell you, I would have fired that guy in the corridor uh, 10 minutes uh, afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and Trump himself reportedly lost his fucking mind to the point where he's screaming. <laughs> so this headline from The New York Times basically says it all. Meandering performance by defense lawyers enrages Trump. The former president was particularly angry at Bruce L. Castor Jr., one of his lawyers, for acknowledging the effectiveness of the House Democrats' presentation. And that right there, it honestly, like, it made my jaw drop when I heard him say that. If you are a defense attorney, in what reality does it benefit you to acknowledge how persuasive the prosecution is? Like, who does this? <laughs> I don't know why he thought this was a good idea. He's correct because they are persuasive. Uh, nonetheless, Trump's response is hilarious to me. So Maggie Haberman of the New York Times writes, On the first day of his second impeachment trial, former President Donald J. Trump was mostly hidden from view on Tuesday at Mar-a-Lago, his private club in Palm Beach, Florida, moving from the new office that aides set up to his private quarters outside the main building. Mr. Trump was said to have meetings that were put on his calendar to coincide with his defense team's presentation and keep him occupied. But he still managed to catch two of his lawyers, Bruce L. Castor Jr. and David I shown on television and he did not like what 
he saw, according to two people briefed on his reaction. Mr. Castor, the first to speak, delivered a rambling, almost somnambulant defense of the former president for nearly an hour. Mr. Trump, who often leaves the television on in the background, even when he is holding meetings, was furious, people familiar with his reaction said. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the angriest, Mr. Trump was an 8, one person familiar with his reaction said. And while he was heartened that his other lawyer, Mr. Schoen, gave a more spirited performance, Mr. Trump ended the day frustrated and irate, the people familiar with his reaction said. I think that this is hilarious. I don't feel bad about laughing at Donald Trump's frustration and pain because this is really needed. Like, he is a spoiled child who was never disciplined for his bad behavior. So for the first time, perhaps, in his entire life, in his 70s, he is seeing consequences for his action. And it's just some consequences. Odds are he won't actually be convicted, but just the mere fact that there's a question that he might be convicted, that alone is too much for him to bear. So he throws temper tantrums. He freaks out. He loses it. He can't handle not getting his way. He is like the caricature of like that spoiled rich brat, that elitist prick, that snob that everyone hates. Having said that, though, Trump is lucky that the Republican Party is a bunch of spineless cowards who are too afraid of his base. Like, deep down, I think that they know that what Trump did was wrong, impeachable. But they're not going to vote that way because they're afraid of the base. And when it comes to Todd, uh, Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, I was going to say Todd Hawley. Um, when it comes to Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, um, they know that legally they could be held accountable as well. So they're not going to, you know, hold Trump accountable. But, uh, you know, it's sad. I, I think that if you got Republicans off the record, if the vote was anonymous, then we know that they would most likely vote to convict Donald Trump. Not all of them, because some of them are just like brain-dead idiots or psychopaths, but most of them would. However, I do think that it's important for transparency's sake in a democracy that they do have an open vote. It's just sad that that acts as a deterrent and it makes them not want to do the right thing and it incentivizes bad behavior because they know that their base is absolutely crazy. I mean, look at the way that Lindsey Graham, like Trump's number one bootlicker, was uh, shunned by Trump's base. Look at how they turned on Mitch McConnell immediately when he acknowledged that Joe Biden was the rightful winner. So nobody wants to face that wrath. Nobody wants to pay the political price to go against Donald Trump. And as a result, once again, he'll get away with it. And he uh, is most likely not going to be convicted. I think they're going to vote to acquit. But if I'm proven wrong, I'll be pleasantly surprised. But I'm not going to get my hopes up because this is America. And we never punish bad behavior when it comes to elites. We reward it. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.